Is it possible to be too nice? I didn't realize how much my desire to be nice to other people was centered around wanting to be liked. It's so important to share what you have, but not at the detriment of taking away from your own needs. I'd rather someone be too nice than too mean to me. <laughs> Yet, you're being too nice is still a societal saying. Why is that a thing? Here I am just pouring out this kindness and they're just like, whoa, wait a second, I've got enough going on in my life. I'd hear a girl say, oh, I, I just want a nice guy. And then I'd be nice, I'm like, oh, you're too nice. What do you, then what does that, what do you mean? <laughs> Hey, Heart Leader community, we are so excited. The Silence Your Inner Critic Immersive Retreat is open for early registration. Click the link below to learn more and secure your spot today. Is it possible to be too nice? This is a question you and I were debating because it was a conversation that I was having with my son. He is going through the things that you go through when you're becoming an adult in your 20s and you desire to be liked and part of a group, but you don't know how much is too much to give and you don't know how nice is too nice. But when you're a kind person and you enjoy giving, is it possible to be too nice? You heard this throughout your life. I've heard this throughout my life. And so we wanted to sit and chat about this and understand where does the phrase come from, number one, too nice? And is it possible? So what do you think? I've had mixed feelings on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why we're bringing this up because when we talked about it, uh, we had slightly different perspectives on it, which is we thought we'd maybe explore those further uh, through this podcast. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I I heard it not necessarily growing up, but more I started hearing it in high school more. Okay. And then when I got to college, I heard it a lot, and it was oddly it was used as a negative. Yes. It was very confusing to me. Like, <laughs> how can I be too nice and uh -huh. that's somehow a bad thing? Yes. Yeah. And I specifically kind of heard it around, you know, when it came to like dating. I'd hear a girl say, oh, I, w I just want a nice guy. And then I'd be nice. I'm like, oh, you're too nice. W what do you, then what does that, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Or nice guys finish last. Yes. Right? Or yeah. So you hear that. Right. And then I'd see some individuals, some of these guys who treated women terribly. And, they, and, and so I'm like, well, why, why is that more attractive? I couldn't understand. And, and when I'd talk to them, these are some of my friends, uh, and, you know, they would be with guys that maybe they weren't, didn't treat them well, but they were still very attracted to them. And it was female very, friends. yeah, female friends. Yes. Uh, and, and or so even male friends, um, just the other way around. Yeah, yeah. In this specific area, it was the female friends and, you know, they'd say, oh, you know, they talk about it, you know, why is he so mean? I want a nice guy. But then they'd keep going back and, 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 and it was like they were very attracted to that. And then I would hear, you know, nice guys finish last. And that's kind of, so it would be this odd circle, uh, cycle of, of confusion for me in terms of, well, then how do I act? And unfortunately, it put me on a path of acting, not, you know, less nice. And I started to receive what I was looking for when I wanted to be nice and get a, a response. And so that... That's something that I kind of want to dive into through this conversation and talk about intention, talk about, you know, purpose and talk about what does it mean to be actually genuinely and authentically nice? Yes. And the perception, even if what you are doing is being genuinely and authentically nice, if the perception of that outside of self is that it's too nice, how much of that do you take on? And how much of that do you let go? Right? And that was part of our discussion. Mm -hmm. How much of that is my responsibility? How much should I be looking inward and going, what is too nice? Yeah. What is coming off as too nice? Mm -hmm. Versus how much of that might just be 
our human pattern of behavior and the very same thing that kept leading your friends back to the guys that weren't treating them the very way they said they desired to be treated, mm-hmm. right? And so this goes similar to what the conversation with my son was around because he really, he is genuinely a kind and loving person. He desires to have people feel happy when he's around. And it's easy to be happy around him because he is so sweet and caring. But through that, sometimes he gives more than he has to give, whether that's financially or energetically or any of those things. If he sees someone in need, it automatically has this call in him where he feels as though he would like, I often call it the rescuer mentality almost. I navigated many aspects of this where you just want to jump in and rescue someone from their own pain. And what is the difference between that and the niceness or the kindness that's actually in his soul? And how do you begin to separate from that? And we were having that conversation, especially around sharing what he has. And it made me think, like, as a parent, I have told him his whole life, it's important to share. It's so important to share what you have. But I forgot the caveat of, but not at the detriment of taking away from your own needs. So when you have excess, share what you have. So when you're a kid and you're telling your kids to share and there's like this just treasure trove of toys all around and you're saying share, it's because there's like 15, 20 other toys right there that they could turn their attention to. Same with other things that as they grow up, sharing and that connection through sharing is a beautiful gift. But if you're going through a time in your life where you don't have resources to share, is it still in your best interest as a kind and loving person to share all of that? And as a mom, I was going back and forth because I, I love him and I don't want him to go into lack in any way. But from his standpoint, he was like, mom, this is what you've taught me to do. I can always make more. I can always find a way. But haven't you always taught me that if I have the resource available and there's someone that has no way of getting it, that I should give it to them? I know I'm being too nice. And that just stabbed me right in the heart. Because for all the times that I had been called too nice in my own life, And it made me feel so bad and so confused and almost like it was that negative slam. Mm -hmm. I was just turning around and making my son feel the same way. And so that's what prompted our conversation. It's like, how do you, how do you balance that? And how many times were people telling me that in my own life because they felt the way that I feel now about my son. So we want to look at it from both standpoints right? When you look at it from my son's standpoint, like he just loves and wants to give. And is there harm in that? And from my standpoint in that moment, it was, I love him and I don't desire him to give all that he has and suddenly find himself in lack. Mm -hmm. So what's the balance? It's a great, great question. I don't know if there's a one size fits all answer to this. And that's what to me is kind of the point of, of this conversation and us continuing to talk about this because there are a multitude of situations that occur and it's, it's going to be impossible to effectively say, this is the way to do it. And, and it can work for everything. It's just not possible. But maybe today we can kind of walk through some different scenarios and some different things that might help people understand real time, given the situation they're in, and make an effective choice that would actually be beneficial for them, for the other person, or for whatever is going on. 
And so I'd like to start with understanding intention. That's the first step to me. What is my intention? When I was in college and I started getting that a lot more, like you're too nice, you're too nice, I was confused as to why that was a bad thing. You know, why wouldn't you want someone to, you know, hold the door for you or, uh, you know, buy you dinner or, you know, be a gentleman. Like that's literally all I was attempting to be. Right. Um, but I didn't realize that what was my intention looking back now and having a lot more clarity, I didn't realize how much my desire to be nice to other people, whether it was friends or romantically or, you know, just business, you know, school, whatever. I mean, it just didn't matter. Just anything in that time of my life. Um, it was centered around wanting to be liked. Yeah. So that in and of itself is a lack mentality intention because it assumes that they already don't like me. And so I need to be nice in order to gain their approval. And then that fulfills me internally. That's a problem, yeah. at least from my perspective. It's, it goes back to that loving yourself yes. or finding value in yourself through someone else. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so I didn't realize that I was creating an empty void that I could not fulfill. And unintentionally, I was using the people around me to make myself feel loved through their love, as you just said, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a huge misstep on my intention. I am no longer authentic in the, in, the, in the genuine kindness that I'm bringing forward, at least in terms of 100%. I, I, it wasn't like I was out seeking to, you know, have bad actions just to look nice to not be like, and that's not, wasn't the intention, but my desire, I so desperately wanted to be liked and, or be loved or be cared for or be seen that I would go out of my way to make the other person feel that way. And then I put an expectation that I should get that in return. And this is, you know, now looking back, I mean, obviously I can see it. I'm like, what, what was I thinking? That is even, uh, you know, that's so unhealthy, so unhealthy, not only for me, but for the other person. Yeah. It's just, it's not fair. It's not a, it's not a correct expectation to place on someone. So where was, you know, so it was, I, you know, the reality is, is I had to ask my, when I did have that awareness and you thankfully helped me understand this is like, well, was I actually being nice if that's what I was placing on someone? Yes. And it's a great question to ask yourself. You know, for me, when I, when kindness is flowing through, when love is flowing through, it isn't so that I can get something from someone else. The joy is in the energy or the love that I feel flow through me as it goes out. Now, would it be a beautiful bonus gift if it also gets reciprocated or acknowledged in gratitude in some way? Well, of course, who doesn't like to be acknowledged? But that's not the why behind it. It is, there's so much love that you feel. When you are truly centered in, I am doing this because I desire to do this action mm -hmm. or to provide this resource or whatever it is that you're doing. And that love from source, from God, from whatever it is that you feel most connected to, that you know that love is flowing through you, that is really the, the joy part of the kindness and the love. So I think no matter what, we're going to receive something, mm -hmm. right? It's not as though when you are being nice or, and I think that's what threw me so much with too nice. It's like, how can I be too nice if what is flowing through me and out is that 
what I would connect with is that energy of just true desire to share this love that I feel from God or source, creation itself. I just desire to share that with you. But there is a point where when you put yourself in someone else's shoes, you can understand how that faucet might be on way too much for what they're ready to receive. And so, yeah, that can come off as too nice, right? Yeah. It's absolutely. too much. Too much. You know, I mean, it is a beautiful thing when, as you said, I mean, it's always going to, there's going to be some movement of, okay, if I, if I genuinely, like, I get joy from giving joy, right? That's, that's a beautiful, authentic, genuine thing. But for us, and that's, that's a beautiful intention, right? But at the same time, it is, to your point, I feel it's, it's not in awareness of what the other person is mm -hmm. receiving out of it. It's only self-focused. Yes. And I believe, and so just for clarity, I believe that's what you're bringing forward. Exactly. So awesome. when we put ourselves on the other side, which is part of what we mentioned at the beginning of this discussion, is mm -hmm. looking at it from both sides. Yeah. We always want to see things from all the different sides that are in our awareness. And in this case, the other person's point of view. Yeah. Maybe they're not ready for all of that. Maybe they didn't ask for all of that. Mm -hmm. And then here I am just pouring out this kindness mm -hmm. or what I perceive as kindness, right? It might not even be what they perceive as kindness or care or love. It was what was flowing through me and the perception of kindness, care, and love. And so it's flowing out at them and they're just like, whoa, wait a second, I've got enough going on in my life. <laughs> got it off. I'm not sure that I can handle you like filling my cup with more. And so it was very one-sided. Mm -hmm. And getting to that balance then, which is I think step three. So mm -hmm. step two is looking at it from the other person's perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Step three then is also understanding inside of your own, which is something you brought forward because I'm like, how? I'm still a little confused. Like I get that I need to tone it back and be an awareness of the other person. But what do you mean that if I know that my joy is the love flowing through me and now I'm aware of the parameters of the other person, what else is there? What do you mean there's a third step when it comes to being too nice? Mm -hmm. And this is where we agreed to disagree. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And this is, this is for me where I perceive the opportunity for being taken advantage of comes into play. Mm -hmm. There are many, uh, maybe a vast majority of the people listening to this have had that experience where they feel like they're constantly giving, 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 and no matter what they do, there is someone or maybe there are multiple people in their lives who are constantly taking and not returning. It doesn't even have to be equally, just they're just maybe even not returning anything at all. This could be a parent-child relationship. This could be a, a child-to-parent relationship. This could be a, a sibling. This could be at work. I mean, there's so many different ways this could manifest in our lives. And so this one is, is tough. Because there are plenty of people who are like, hey, I just, I'm all about self-sacrificing. I'm all about, like, this gives me, just giving to them gives me joy, regardless of what they say. And whether they say thank you or whether they return favors or whether they, you know, build on the kindness that I'm giving to them, right? Yes. And so that's where I think for me, um, there's a sense of self-love or a potentiality of a lack of self-love when, when the willingness to continue to give when the knowing is there that it is not being received. Yes. And so that's like, and I can't speak for anyone else. I just know that I personally could not show up at the level of authenticity that I would like knowing that I would if I don't have a boundary of of receiving? Yes. 
That there's be, some kind of mm-hmm. give and take. Yeah. And it's not, I'm not looking at it from a transaction standpoint. I'm looking at it more from the standpoint of, well, why would I spend, like if I'm giving to someone or a group of people or however it is, and I am, that is energy being expended. Mm-hmm. That is my time. That is, it could be money. It could be experience. I mean, there's so many things it could be. And if it's not being received, but I've got other people who are receiving and then returning it back, I'm taking away from the opportunity of building upon those others and giving more to them and then creating this beautiful symbiotic relationship that is is not necessarily in terms of 50-50 equal, but it, it feels there, there's a sense of equality in terms of the giving and the receiving. Whereas on the other side, it feels like it's just one, it's one way. It's not a collaboration. It's kind of like a, it's almost like a, a, a push to one way. And so that to me is where I felt that I, if, if I'm so caught up in that energy and I'm constantly giving, then I'm taking away from the others who are actively attempting to return that, that kindness and that love back to me. So instead of putting my time into what feels like the potentiality of an empty void to these individuals, I'd rather regroup, pull my energy back and give that to those uh, who are receiving and gifting back and, and, and expand that experience. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. Which I feel is such a beautiful thing where I had my agree to disagree is it would be wonderful for those who hold the belief that we have a single lifetime. Mm And that this is the exchange in a single lifetime. If you are someone like me who views it in a different time span and have a belief or even an experience that you have had more than this single lifetime, then that very same energetic balance and exchange can happen in more than just this experience in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. So when we take a concept like a karma, if you will, from Vedic philosophy, and we apply that in this term, then it would be as though, say there is an individual who had so much to give in a previous lifetime and then an individual who was not in a place to give anything at all. Maybe it is because their body was not in a place. And spiritually, they may have been giving a lot of gratitude, but the reflection in this experience would be that they couldn't provide that gratitude. Then you have an individual who has in some way agreed to a lifetime of providing for the other individual who cannot return anything. Mm. Might not ever get a thank you for all you do. You may not ever find that balance or that equilibrium that we perceive we should have in this lifetime. Mm. And I think about that for the number of parents and families and people that I know that have family members, friends, others, that they're taking care of that have these types of concerns or medical things going on in their life, right? But then if we have another lifetime, it may be that those two very same souls agree to come back and switch places. Mm -hmm. And that balance then occurs in a different way. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at it as though, okay, I need this exchange right now in this lifetime, then we might be very disappointed and we may not get it. And it may not be so much about applying it. If I'm not getting it from this group, then I'm going to pivot and I'm only going to apply it to this group because you may have something that you are meant to provide to this group that now you're suddenly not providing if we're only looking at it in this 
one construct. And that's where belief comes into play, right? That's where we have to know what feels truth for us, what feels in alignment for us. And we have to go into that space of holding that for ourselves, Mm -hmm. not saying you're not right. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know that you're not right. In your experience, it is 100% true for you. And so that's how you should navigate your life. In my experience, this is 100% true for me. Now, I might learn a different truth as I go through my life, right? I've learned so many different truths as I've gone through my life. But in this moment right now, my belief is that the best thing I can do is when I feel called to be too nice Mm -hmm. or to be in service or to flow something through, to not look at anything other than the way that energy makes me feel Mm -hmm. and to hold some boundaries like, I was talking about for my son, right? Like, I'm never going to go completely in lack or I'm not going to be able to exist. So, but what is the definition of true lack for me? Mm-hmm. And I have to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. And, we'll, and it's not just lack from a, a, a physical standpoint or monetary standpoint. There's also energetic, spiritual, you mm-hmm. know, emotional as well. And I think like these are, these are aspects of, of, that we don't really think about. And it's hard to, right? Um, you know, for clarity in terms of the assumption of w- the differentiation between what I brought forward and what you brought forward, you know, I actually believe a lot of the same things that you're talking about. And so just for clarity across the board. Yes. But it's, it's when I see it from the holistic standpoint of uh, a soul level and a human experience, and I see the potentiality of a misalignment there, then I'm uh, the idea is that maybe that the this the individual is unconscious in their behavior and not aligned with the what they maybe were meant to experience in this one. So maybe they were in a previous life, for example, that they were constantly, uh, you know, uh, taking, 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 right? And then maybe on this next one, they're meant to balance that and give, give, give. But maybe they're they're unconscious, and so they're back to the old habit of take, take, take from the previous. And so do I want to get caught up in that? And how do I know? And how much does that interfere with, with what I'm seeking to do in my alignment of my soul to the human to the experience I'm meant to gain? Yeah. And so that's, that's it's a good, it's, it's a tough. I mean, we'd go crazy attempting to figure that out with every single individual and every interaction that we made, right? And, you know, it's it just, it would be impossible. But I, th- I feel like there, are, there are, are subtleties that are brought forward. And these are skills that you've helped me with. And I feel like we help each other with. And this is, this is intuition. Mm-hmm. And I want to bring this up because this is a sk- intuition is a skill that many of us use on a daily basis. And yet it is not highly valued by society, which is wild. And if I can, we yeah. call it a skill. Like intuition is a skill. Yeah. I would offer intuition is one of our senses. Sure. We've just deadened it. That's a great way to put it. We have completely deadened it. It's like if we never used, if you blindfolded yourself mm-hmm. for the majority of your life and you just took that blindfold off today, you would not see the same way that you would if you had had access to your eyes your entire life. Mm-hmm. You will have to train yourself to actually see you have this sense of sight you've just made certain you did not have access to it for a very long time and so now you have to learn how to use it and that will take focus and that will take effort and it's the same with this sense right intuition is one of our senses my perspective i love it yeah thank you for that it's a it's a beautiful position. Uh, and, and I agree wholeheartedly. And so that's really honing in on our own intuition to me is one, a way to, uh, expand our self love because we're telling ourselves that we see ourselves that we know and we receive from ourselves. That's important. That's a big part of self love that we kind of tend to forget, right? 
And it has to do with self-worth as well. You know, knowing, you know, is if I'm in a situation and this pattern keeps coming forward, you know, it's maybe I need to lean in to my intuition, understand, you know, start to ask myself, is this meant for my soul growth? Is it meant for the individual the other individual's soul growth? Is it meant for both of ours? And if I continue to give, for example, in this sense where I am being nice, I'm not receiving in the way that I'm giving, you know, is that, is that okay? You know, maybe there are certain relationships in our lives where we decide, yes, yes, it is okay. Yeah. And maybe there's times where we don't just create a blanket approach either way <laughs> and say, oh yeah, so all of them, I'm just going to be fully taken advantage of. Like, that's not going to be helpful either, or nor, nor is it the other way. Like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to make sure that, uh, you know, um, that no one gets close to me because, you know, I, it's only one way, right? right? And so it's, how, how do I, how do I start to be more introspective and aware of, of the energy that I share in, in, the, in collaboration with the other? And if it feels fulfilling, even though it's not received or returned in the same way, maybe maybe that's our opportunity to say okay you know maybe in this relationship that's just that's this is part of what i'm meant to experience they're meant to experience and we're going to grow in that but if for some reason it feels like you're being siphoned and you feel like you are being drained from this experience i would i would maybe argue or share that like maybe that's not the healthiest maybe that's your intuition telling you hey this one is not necessarily meant to be in the way that it seems yeah. and maybe a boundary needs to be put up so that you and the other individual can learn and grow from that experience because that in and of itself is very valuable so intuition is like the fourth yeah flow in what we've been talking about right yeah so and that's regardless of your belief whether you believe you're in a single lifetime or multiple mm -hmm. lifetimes I do feel like our inner compass allows us to understand what is going on in an exchange, mm -hmm. even if it's in that one single exchange. Mm -hmm. We all get that gut feel or that heart pull or just that internal knowing at times when we're headed in the direction we feel we're meant to go. Or if we are so far and we're like, this just doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. This isn't right. I don't even know why I'm doing this. But there's still learning even in that. Sure. Right? So intuition is a, a great sense that we have the more that we hone it. Mm -hmm. I do want to make sure that we circle back and talk a little bit too about the observer. Mm -hmm. The one that will say, not only the one receiving it that says you're too nice, but in this case, like what started our whole conversation was me talking to my son. I wasn't even there. I was the observer. And I got this a lot too. And someone saying that wasn't even present in the situation because of the love and the care that you have saying you're being too nice or you're being too generous. And it's so easy if we are the ones who are being nice and generous to get frustrated with that or to allow that to trigger. And I can only speak for myself and others that I have talked about this with and have felt similarly, but it can trigger you to feeling like you've somehow done something wrong or bad by giving of yourself in a way that the other person doesn't understand. And if you are the observer, as I was in this case, we don't know what the person who is giving of themselves or being what we consider too nice is actually experiencing in that moment. Mm -hmm. So I would offer one tip for those of us who are the observers and just throwing in our perspective is to start asking questions first which is a step I usually do fairly good at, but in this case, I completely missed because I was so tied to the person 
And I felt so protective of the person. But that's not an excuse. It's not. As much as I would love to stand behind that and say, that's why, he's still a person empowered to make his own choices. I have every opportunity to share my observations, but only after I have asked him, why did you make these choices? Or seek to understand first what was going on, not just the couple of sentences that he was telling me, but truly get information. Because I didn't have all of the data to even truly offer that type of an observation in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I can say from my experience, a lot of times that happened to me too. People would look, they would see one small part of the exchange, and then it was, well, you were just way too nice to them. Why do you do that? Mm -hmm. And then I would cower a little bit like, I I don't know. I didn't feel like I was being too nice. And so, yeah, we got to get to a point where we're willing to seek first to understand. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, and maybe one to even expand further upon, you know, to some degree, why is, why is being too nice, you know, as a theory, a problem, Yes. you know, instead of, you know, why is it looked down on or meant as a, I know every time I received it, it was meant as a slam or as a, as a, like what you're doing is wrong. Uh, and in that sense versus, you know, I, I, you don't often hear people like, oh, you're too mean. Like you don't hear that very often. Or if somebody tells you you're too mean, then mm-hmm. you don't cower, you fight back, yeah. right? Yeah. So. yeah. So what is, why, why, why is that? You know, what, what, what is causing that type of experience around that word, around the, that, or that, that feeling and right. why is being nice even perceived as a bad thing? You know, it's, um, it's definitely interesting. It's an interesting concept and one that I really, really struggled with and still to this day, you know, even though I've spent a lot of time attempting to understand and seeing it from all the sides and, and as we've talked about all to this point, like there's a lot of different ways where it, it does make sense. Like, oh yeah, that's, it's, it's, it could be seen in that way. But it also... But maybe. <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> but it also still holds like if someone were to say you know you're being too nice like yeah i mean it's still gonna trigger it still makes i still feel that like you know why i'm why why am i doing something wrong Mm -hmm. and and so it's um you know i'd rather someone be too nice than too mean to me (laughs) like you know i think about it and i'm sure a lot of people would probably feel that yet you're being too nice is still a societal saying you know why is that a thing i don't know I agree. And again, that goes back to even as somebody receiving that comment, Mm -hmm. I need to understand that this is part of what has been built into our societal norms, our collective consciousness, even at this point, right? Mm -hmm. It has really been built into our collective way of thinking that to get ahead, one must do this and It's like the strongest, only the strongest survive, Mm -hmm. right? So if you are too nice, then that equals too weak, which means you may be taken down or taken out, Mm -hmm. right? So to me, I almost feel like it's a compassionate saying Mm -hmm. as though they care, much like I did, about your well-being. At the same time, it's a slam, right? You're the weak one. You're too nice. Mm -hmm. But in a way, I'm saying that because I don't want you to get hurt. Yeah. However, we are well past survival of the fittest and only the strong survive. Mm -hmm. We are moving into an emotional and a mental revolution in our consciousness. Mm -hmm. To do so, we need to be willing to get past the mentality that has us 
in the only the strong survive. Therefore, embracing kindness is part of that. But that takes us back to the beginning of this whole discussion, which is part of being nice is also understanding someone else's threshold of what they can receive, right? And not just pouring your stuff out. We've had many discussions on podcasts around what is help, actually. And all the times you thought you were helping me where I was like, but I didn't (laughs) ask you for that. (laughs) And the intention was pure. It was good. However, it didn't navigate me to where my intended direction was. But your desire to be helpful and to be kind and nice and loving was 100% there. So there was a mismatch in what I could receive and what you were giving. Yeah. Mm, Absolutely. And, you know, maybe this bigger picture is really just is about harmony. You know, a lot of these, I guess I'm just kind of thinking out loud, but, you know, when you bring up the nature versus nurture, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but no one like, you know, uh, yes, a lion will, will kill its prey, but it's not constantly murderous, Correct. right? You know, it'll be around its prey. And sometimes there's even videos of like them playing. Mm-hmm. Was well, a lion being too nice? Or is it in harmony in that moment? Because it doesn't need to exert something or I don't know. Maybe it's just found its, its harmony. It's not hungry, so it doesn't need to. To me, that's no longer nature versus nurture. That's a symbiotic balance of nature and nurture. And that's maybe something we can learn from as a society. Because, yeah, we're not in that survival of the fittest anymore. We're in a collaborative experience now as we evolve. And so one over another just tears us all down. One with another lifts us all up. So that's harmony, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe instead of saying you're too nice, for example, maybe it could just be a simple understanding of, of saying, hey, I love that your first inclination was to be kind in that moment. But, you know, I really care about you. And, and I really just, you know, make sure that someone isn't taking advantage of you or that you're, you're being well taken care of. And so, and, you know, maybe that's not the best way. Maybe it's a way. Um, but at least it's, it's a way to communicate without putting down someone at the same time of attempting to show compassion. It's at least acknowledging that the individual that you see them for the kindness and care that they're bringing forward and also showing them that you have compassion sympathy and empathy for whatever situation that they went through that to me is far more collaborative that's harmony where if you're you're saying if you're attempting to show compassion but you're putting them down that's disharmony that's opposites that's no longer in connection and so you know maybe that's a start Maybe that's where we can begin to do that within ourselves and the more harmony we create within ourselves and the more harmony we can create outside of ourselves. That's brilliant Mm -hmm. because that applies across all of us, Mm -hmm. right? Whether you're the observer, whether you're Mm -hmm. the individual who is exuding kindness Mm -hmm. or you're the one receiving it. If we're constantly checking in Mm -hmm. and understanding the harmony and the balance for us and that connection Mm -hmm. then we're driving forward based on the same flow that we were potentially discussing earlier right what is an alignment for my experience in this moment but at the same time i'm not taking away from your experience in this moment i acknowledge both exist right now in the same time it's so beautiful and if you look at harmony from a place of, of, of music, it's, you know, it's two notes being played at the same time. You know, it's not just one note just being played isn't a harmony, right? Two or and, more, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, if it, and, and a noise is just a bunch that are, are working against each other. But when you have two or more that are in collaboration, yeah. that is what creates a, 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 the sound of harmony. 
Right. How dare you be a C note? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Why would you want to be a C note? Yeah, You're being a huge D note right now. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> I'll be a D sharp in a couple of minutes. <laughs> No, this is the kind of stuff that we do, yes. though. Yes, that's right? so true. Yeah. Instead of understanding that which we are not experiencing, we cast a judgment on it because we happen to be in a different part of the scale if we want to keep the whole yeah. music flow going, right? Yeah. But if you're an A note and I'm a D note, mm -mm. I'm not going to play the same tune that you are. It's just not going to happen. And yeah. that's okay. That's what makes the beautiful music. Definitely. Why? But that doesn't mean that I'm being too loud. Mm -hmm. If I'm playing loud and proud, right? If I'm flowing through what vibrates within me. Yeah. Yeah. That's I feel like said. That's the whole, to me, that's the point of this discussion. It's like mm -hmm. there is no easy answer. It's not as though you and I can come on here and say, oh, here's the answer to being too nice. Yeah. There isn't an answer. This is a deep, difficult discussion that you wouldn't think would be deep and difficult. Mm -hmm. But it kind of is because it brings to light so many other things that we do as a collective to one another. And that's how we got into this conversation. And oh my gosh, this is our normal life conversation. So <laughs> yeah. if anybody ever came to dinner, they'd be like, um, you actually do talk like this to each other. Yeah. So we had this in-depth discussion and had to understand that it's okay that we don't align on all aspects of it. Yeah. But that's harmony, right? Mm -hmm. And we continue to learn from each other in that perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. We... um. You know, and, and as you said, there's, there isn't, I mean, here we are at, towards the end of this podcast and there is no answer. And, and that's, I think that's important to be okay with. Yeah. You know, so much of humanity and society is so focused on results and answer yes. instead of a process. But a process is huge. It's so, it's almost like it's undervalued. I mean, we hear that saying like, it's all, oh, it's about the journey, not the destination. And it's going to sound so cliche. Yeah, but everybody you know? wants to get but, to that destination. Yeah. Yeah. But the, but how many times when we do get to the destination, are we constantly looking back at the journey mm -hmm. and thinking, oh, that was, the, those were the times that was the best, yes. but we didn't even know we were in it. Yes. And so I think what, what we're kind of talking about today is a way to, um, initiate the process and know that every now moment is part of our process and and we have the opportunity to kind of dive within and if we ask ourselves are we being too nice or you know maybe we shifted into kind of what we were talking about and like hey you know i'm proud of myself for for the first thing i want to be is is kind to someone i'm proud of that aspect of who i am yes. but where can i where can i grow is this, is this action stemming from a lack of self-worth because I want to be liked, because I want to be loved or cared for, uh, because I realize that I don't actually love myself and I'm loving myself through other people? You know, or is it coming from a genuine standpoint of in this moment, I feel connected to source, to love, to uh, authenticity, to everything that I can imagine that is both greater and me at the same time. And it's like in this moment, I just want to, I just desire deeply from the very depth of my soul to share in that love and kindness with you, regardless of what you return. Both are great. Yes. Because both have learning, both contribute to the whole, both create harmony. And if you're the receiver or you're mm -hmm. the observer, there are things that you can do. These are all steps that we've provided that can help you along the journey that really doesn't have an answer, but neither does life. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that that's, that's an important thing for us to always remember too. We want all these answers. Tell me, tell me, tell me. But they're... The point we're flowing through with life is to find our own answers, to discover what has meaning for us right now, mm -hmm. and know that what has meaning for us right now may not have meaning for us even 20 years from now, but we don't have to hold on to it with an iron grip. Mm -hmm. 
We just have to understand what skills and what tools can help us with what's important to us right now Mm -hmm. so we can continue learning and growing. And if you're feeling especially nice right now and you love our content, can you take a moment and click like and subscribe below? It helps us so much in continuing to take our journey forward and share this message across our global community. See you on the next podcast.